It's all good. It's all good. See, there you go. <laughs> Hello. I feel like I should start the broadcast in Spanish. Buenos dias. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Bienvenidos a Women That Tread. <laughs> Hoy es miércoles. And the reason why I'm speaking in Spanish is because I have this lovely guest here, Laura Zavala, right? Is that how I pronounce it correctly? And yes. we are here getting ready to celebrate Hispanic Year Month, which technically begins tomorrow, right? September 15th. Yeah, merito. Yeah, merito. Yeah, merito. And then our uh, the Mexican Independence Day is September 16th, El Grito. Yes. Yes. For those of you that think that Cinco de Mayo is... His uh, Mexican Independence Day, uh, why, why, it's, why, not. Why? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so welcome, Laura. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm I'm excited uh, to be back to work. I had an amazing time in in Greece the last couple of days um, with my son, my my sister, my niece, and it was the most incredible experience. I, for as long as I can remember, I had always dreamed about visiting Santorini. Um, mm -hmm. the, the blue domes. Um, yes. I always like picture myself like being in front of it and, and seeing that ocean. And it was the most amazing experience. It was just, um, yeah, it, it's so surreal when you have a dream mm -hmm. and it's something that you've, you've had forever. And to finally like be there, it's, it's like you, you can't, I don't know, you can't, seem to like find the words to express what it feels like um because you think it's like like it's always just gonna oh like somebody else is gonna go somebody else is gonna post pictures right. about it and so yeah. when you're finally there like it's it's a big shock that's um incredible i mean i want to travel so badly but for whatever reason i still like i find excuses not to i still have kind of that fear of like well i don't have anyone to go with so do I go alone? But I know a lot of women that have traveled all over the world by themselves. You know, I know that there are some groups. So the fact you went with family, right? I did, but I have traveled on my own. Um, I, I was in I, a couple of years ago, I visited London and I did that on my own. Um, and it was amazing. You know, I always thought like, oh my God, like, what do you do? And is it going to be weird? Because you're having like dinner or lunch alone. It's yeah, not and the safety part of it. I always kind of worry about the safety aspect, but I see you did it. I know there's so many people that have done it. Um, so yeah. I'm like, <laughs> now I'm thinking like, why am I, you know, being so kind of lame about it? <laughs> well, it is scary. I'll have to say it. it's, it's totally okay. like scary to, you know, to say like, okay, no, I'm, I'm going to do this. But, yeah. um, you know, for me, when I went to London, it, it was, um, my um my first time ever traveling on my own um and you're in another country it, it was the most scariest thing but i i will say once i did it i was like oh my god like that felt so good um you know you're not trying to compromise what you want to do for the day you just go um i stayed in a hotel that was right there at the airport because it made me feel safe okay. um it was more expensive but i was like you know this is my first time trying it out so we're gonna we're going to go the safe route. Um, and I would make sure that I was back in the hotel, you know, at a decent time. Um, I tried not to look like the traveler, um, you know, with a big Britain flag all over. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to like blend in. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that as, as, you know, um, women, like we have to get ballsy and, and it's okay. It's okay to travel on our own. Yeah, no, you're you're definitely inspiring me even more now. Um, Cause yeah, I'm not getting any younger, <laughs> you know. And now that everything's opened back up, you know, it's like people are out and about, and so I figure I might as well try. And now that you know people can work remotely, I could you know t easily work remotely, especially being marketing branding. <laughs> All I need is my my phone, and I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'll have great scenery to do reels and TikToks. <laughs> Honestly, you know, um, it was the, the best because um, Reese is nine hours ahead of our time here. Okay. Um, so for my work schedule, it worked out perfect um, because I was able to um, do all of our tours and, um, you know, be um, I always tell my son um, he's used to me working all the time, every day, every hour. And I always tell him we're not going to spend quantity time, but we will spend quality time always. Um, so when we go on vacation, I try to be present. I try to be in the moment. 
Um, I try not to, you know, use my phone a lot when I'm with him because we don't get to share that much time together when we're back home. Like everybody's on their own schedule. He's driving now, you know, he has two jobs, so he's always on the go. Um, so I always um, make it a commitment that we're, if we're traveling, that's my time to dedicate to him, to enjoy that moment, create memories for him. Um, so it worked out really good because I got to enjoy my day. And then by the time we would come back to the hotel, um, it was like right around nine, eight, our time here. So I would be able to connect and work, get all my emails, um, do all my calls. Um, so it was perfect. It was perfect uh, timing with uh, with Greece time. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, let's be honest, things are a little slower, <laughs> you know, in the market. So I'm sure you weren't as inundated as if maybe, you know, you did this some other time. So I'm, I'm sure it allowed you at least a little bit of downtime <laughs> from work, it, which is good. Yeah, definitely not, not as busy as um, we've seen in the last couple of years, yeah. um, but I still feel very blessed um, for, for the business that I have, um, this year and, and all the, um, closings that I've been able to accomplish this year, um, and stay busy. Cause I know there are other loan officers that are really struggling. Um, so I always feel very grateful and, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's a Latina in me. Um, but I think like, we've always like learned, it's like a cultural thing. You, you learn to be a squirrel. Um, yeah. I'm a single parent. Um, so, you know, even when things are great, um, and, and, you know, in the last couple of years, um, it was just, you know, the, the business that you hadn't seen or you hadn't expected. Um, I always try to live under my means. And, um, one of the best qualities that, you know, my, my parents passed on was to be a, a saver, um, because you never know. And I always tell that to my son, I was like, you got to save for rainy days. You got to save for rainy days. Cause you never know. Um, so I just, yeah, I, I'm blessed with the business that I have. Um, who, you know, quien no quiere? Who, who doesn't want to be inundated? Um, yeah. But it, but it, it does help to be able to um, have these slow downtimes, um, and and also dedicate that time to your family and and to yourself. I feel like I really needed that. It, it is hard, Raquel. It is so hard, to, you know, to be a, a professional. And for me, I'm a provider for my parents, for my son. Oh, wow. um, so it is very hard to, you know, not have this mentality of like work, 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 um, and not want to give a time to yourself. Um, but it, it had been a while. Um, we, you know, we were really good during COVID and we were not traveling at all. I wanted to keep my parents safe. Um, so it, it's been a while since um, we had traveled. Um, but it was, it was long needed. It was long needed and it was well deserved. very yeah. well deserved. <laughs> Wow. Uh, so let me ask you then, because you and I, so it's kind of a, it's a really cute story. <laughs> you were so cute. Um, because I, you and I had been connected on social media, Instagram and LinkedIn for quite some time. And I see all your stuff. I was for, there was a moment in time on my Instagram feed, you were always popping up. And I was just really impressed because you're always out there and, you know, you're big with the Hispanic community and, you know, proud Latina and out there, you know, helping as much as you possibly could with Hispanic homeownership. And, you know, that's really important for me as well. So I was a huge fan of yours. And then you and I ended up at the NAREB National Convention and Policy, you know, Housing Policy Conference in D.C., and it's funny because we sat at the same table. I was with a bunch of movement people. Yeah. Montel, who should be watching. And I know LinkedIn, speaking of which, apparently there's like some like snafu over on LinkedIn. So a lot of people will be watching this replay, um, but he knows I'm having you on. And <laughs> it was just funny because, yeah, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, wait, I think that I know that girl that that looks like Laura. And I think that, you know, Laura Zavala. And then you, I, I don't know if I said hi to you or what, but you were, <laughs> I was like, ah, fan girl, fan girl. <laughs> I was laughing because I was like, what? I was like, I'm busy fangirling over you. So it was just really cool that we got to meet each other. Um, but I never really got a chance to kind of, you know, the backstory as to when you started, how you got into the industry, because, you know, for a lot of Latinas, you know, coming into the mortgage industry, that's not really you know, kind of common and we need more 
Latinas and Latinos in the industry, especially since Hispanic home ownership has been one of the, I think the, the only demographic that's been on the rise. And uh, so we need more people that look like the people they're, you know, helping. So like, yeah, tell me how it all kind of started with you. So I've been in the banking industry for a little over 20 years. Um, oh. I started as a teller at a local credit union right out of high school. I, you know, I was just looking for a job. Um, I want, I didn't know what I wanted to do if I wanted to go to college right away. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to major in. Um, but we also, we don't come for money. So it's not like I could, you know, put myself and go to college and, and just like, you know, a lot of people it's like, Oh, I'll, I'll decide when I'm in there or I can change my major. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't have that kind of money. So <laughs> it wasn't something, you know, that I could give myself the luxury to. Um, so I started working at the, at the credit union. I, and, you know, back then, back in the good old day, um, you found jobs in the newspaper. So I was going through the newspaper um, and I always visioned myself working at a bank as a little girl. Um, and then what is it about? I don't know. I have to say like when I was young, I would go to the swap meet and we would get stuff and we would play bank and, and like tell her and do receipts. Like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> you know, that we would, when we were little, my, my, my dad had a routine. My mom always worked on Saturdays. So my yeah. dad would, um, would have us on, on Saturdays and, um, and our routine, and um, was, you know, he would um, take us uh, to the post office because he paid all his bills with money orders. So we would go to the post office and he would buy his money orders and then he would pay the bills and then he would take us um, to the restaurant where my mom worked um, for breakfast. And and then after that, we would go bowling. This was every Saturday for as long as I can remember when I was a little kid. And that was our routine with my sisters. And um, when we would go to the post office, the post office used to have that island in the middle when you're in line and they would have all bunch of like papelitos, like just little pieces of papers, like, you know, to certify your stuff. Yeah, we would steal those. We would steal those papelitos um, because they were my my little teller play money or or my teller um, little transaction slips. Yeah. And um, we would set up a box. We would set up an, uh, the iron board because that was my counter. And um, for as long as I can remember, whenever we would play with my sisters, a las casitas or, you know, I'm like, well, there has to be a bank. You guys need to go to the bank and you need to get money out to buy groceries. Um, so it, it's so funny because I feel like a lot of the times, you know, you end up in careers or professions and, um. And, and you don't know why or how or um, but for me, I feel like it's just been in in my blood, in my DNA. Yeah. Yep. And so I started working as a teller. I worked myself up um, and then I realized uh, that that was my calling. That was something that I really I loved my job. I loved, you know, being a teller. Every time there was an opening for a position in new accounts and I was always applying. I didn't know what I was going to be doing. It was intimidating. Um, and I read articles, you know, that it says for women, um, when we are applying for a job, it's like we feel or we think that we need to have like 80% of the qualifications or more. Mm -hmm. But for men, you know, if they have like 50 or 60%, they're like, yeah, I got it. I'm at 100%. And learn, they will apply. Yeah, and yeah. they will apply. And that has always stuck to me. And I was like, why are we always, you know, thinking that, you know, if we don't have all the qualifications that we can apply? And I'm like, I'm just going to learn as I go. I, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to apply for these positions. And that's what I did. And I started to climb the corporate ladder. And I will have to say that being bilingual was the biggest tool. Mm -hmm. And I tell that to my son all the time. It's important to learn Spanish. Um, you know, it's your grandparents' language. Um, it's my language is my first language. You know, I, I, my sisters and I, um, when we went to school, we, um, we were like the only bilingual kids back there, um, back, back in, uh, back in the day. Um, and you grew up in Colorado. And I, I I'm a native. Now, you actually grew up in Colorado. Okay. I, I'm a native, but back then, um, the teachers were not bilingual. So you had to speak English. Um, my parents did not speak a slick in English. So you had to speak Spanish. I mean, at the age of five, we were translating. They were taking us to AutoZone. And my dad was like, okay, 
I need a transmission. I'm like, I don't know transmission. Um, so you had to, we grew up in, in, um, in a, uh, atmosphere where it by being bilingual wasn't a choice. It was a necessity to be able to get my parents, you know, uh, the communication that they needed, but then also for us, uh, for the school system, you had to learn English. Uh, so we grew up, I've always, you know, uh, been bilingual for as long as I can remember. Um, and that was the same for my, um, for my sisters. And I feel like now, um, there's a, a lot of no sabo kids, you know, they, they struggle with their Spanish. Um, yeah, well, my kids, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm a little ashamed, ashamed that my kids don't know Spanish. Um, I mean, I grew up just like you, bilingual. I, for, Spanish was my first language. I don't remember learning Spanish or learning English. I just, I'm, I've always known yeah. both. Yeah. And my kids, they don't know it, but it's, it's a lot of it's my fault because my ex, Ooh. even though he's a female, he grew up in an environment where you didn't want to speak Spanish, you know, Puerto Rican Bronx, where they're trying to kind of assimilate to the culture, America. And they, it was more of a, there was a stigma around, you know, speaking Spanish in that area, you know, when you're trying to kind of move up in the world, which is unfortunate. So he never spoke it. And so for me, I felt weird speaking to my kids in Spanish and him not understanding it. So I didn't ever do that. I mean, my dad's a gringo. He's American. Um, he's a Russian Romanian, like that's his background, but he went to medical school in Mexico. So he learned Spanish and that's, so he was able to understand when my mom spoke to us in Spanish. So that's why it worked out in our household. Yeah. But, you know, with my kids, yeah. And now they, you know, they're 21 and 18 and they're like, mom, it's your fault. And I'm like, you also don't remember how much of a hard time you guys gave me when I wanted you guys to speak Spanish. So it's not all my fault. So is your son bilingual? He is. He is. And it's a blessing um, that my parents um, live with us um, because, you know, they they don't speak English. My mom, um, she I remember when we were little um, she went to school. She wanted to learn English and she did. She's able to have a communication and understand. Um, but my dad just knows the very basic words. Um, and he would always say, well, I have three girls, you know, they can always interpret for me. Um, so he always felt like, you know, he didn't have to um, he didn't, there wasn't a need for him to learn. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's, to me, it's been a blessing that my parents live with us because, um, you know, it helped my son and I can see it with my nieces. Um, my nieces struggle with their Spanish and, um, and I always tell them you have, and I told my son when he started um, high school, you know, he wanted to be like the cool kids and take Spanish and oh, German. Wow. And I said, absolutely not. Spanish is a must. Um, I don't care what other classes you take, but I am forcing you to take Spanish because even though you know how to speak it, you don't know how to write it. You don't know how to read it. And um, and job opportunities are 10 times better for people that are bilingual. And what is it? Over 80 percent of the entire world speaks Spanish. And I said, so you have to speak Spanish. It's not a choice. Oh, it's been the greatest gift that my mom could have given me. I am so grateful. I'm always, I, every day there's, uh, you know, an opportunity for me to utilize my Spanish. And so I think it's really unfortunate. And it's something that really kind of bothers me in this country, just saying that, like, we still kind of look down upon people that speak Spanish and are bilingual without, I don't get it. Like, the more the merrier. I think the more languages that we that we know, the I mean, we live in an entire planet with other countries and other wow. cultures and languages. Like, come on. You know that I read I read that in China, the kids at the age of two, they are taught Spanish, not English. They are taught Spanish wow. because China understands that over 80% of the world speaks Spanish. And I wish as, you know, um, the United States being, you know, the number one country yeah. that, you know, over the years, they would change that. Um, I've had, you know, I, I've, I've uh, through, through my banking years, I, I would come across a lot of people that were born or in the 50s and the 60s when, um, like you said, you know, it was, it was like forbidden. It's like you couldn't not. The parents didn't have that choice to teach their kids Spanish because it was something it was like looked down upon. It wasn't something that it was like, oh great, you know, bilingual. No, it was like, so um definitely don't feel bad because it was, you know, that the, the time eras um 
or where or the location. I think that, you know, that also um, had an impact on families on whether they could or couldn't. Um, like I said, for us, it, we were my parents worked in agriculture um, when they first moved to the States and the farm Tanaka Farms would provide housing for the workers. And so it's almost like we got the best of the world um, because even though we were born in the States and, you know, we had all the opportunities that this country offers uh, to immigrants. We um, we grew up in like this community of Latinos. And so if it was one birthday, we the entire community would celebrate. Um, we got to learn the games and, and stuff that, you know, the, these kids would play back home back in Mexico. Um, so I always say I had the, the best childhood um, and 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 that set me up to be able to be fully bilingual and then push that on my son. Yeah, I mean, it's what's really cool is that so you and I grew up very differently, but. I, the pride, like it's still there. It doesn't matter, you know, how you like, you, once again, your parents came over, they didn't even speak English. They don't, you know, they were hardworking, you know, immigrants. And, and my mom kind of came over because my dad and like married him and met, you know, had met him in Mexico. And she came up from a, a very different background. She actually studied in the States when she wow. was in high school, she went to parochial school in, in, a, in Pasadena. She had traveled. So like very different. But the pride, it didn't matter. Like, that's the commonality here is that I grew up just so prideful. Like, I never was embarrassed when I spoke Spanish or my mom spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. She did a really good job at instilling that in us. Like, you know, you have to be very proud of where you come from. And, you know, I love that it was the same thing for you because I think, unfortunately, a lot of times because of circumstances, then there is that shame. Yeah. And there's a little bit of that embarrassment, but I love that we're two like proud Latinas that came from two different backgrounds. And it's like, it doesn't matter. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. we, you know, we honor our, our heritage. So where, what part of Mexico are your parents from? I'm just curious. They are from the state of Guanajuato. Um, okay. it's, it's the heart of Mexico. There's no ocean, no beaches. Um, it's all greenery. Um, we're about five, six hours away from Mexico city, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah. and my parents have a home down there. So growing up, you know, every year, sometimes twice a year, we would go down there. Um, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing to see how people live down there, you know, and then um, what you have here. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I would, when my son was little, I would also take him um, so that he could see that, um, you know, here, uh, education is, um, like something like that normal little kids, not, not in Mexico. Yeah. Education is a luxury in Mexico yeah. for a lot That's of families. A yeah. It's a privilege down there. And um, yeah, I actually grew up going to Mexico twice a year too. My tita, uh, my mom's mom, she lived in Guadalajara. And so every summer we would spend two, three weeks in Mexico, Guadalajara, and then winter, most Christmases we would spend out there as well. So I grew up, I tell people that I'm bilingual and bicultural. Yeah, because I really did grow up within the Mexican culture and in my family still there. If anything, my mom's actually in Mexico right now. So my mom was born in Tepic, Nayarit, and they're having a huge reunion and they're taking my mom, my grandmother's ashes that were in Guadalajara. They're taking them to Tepic and she's going to be buried with her um, with her mom there and uh, her sisters. And so they're doing this whole thing. And unfortunately, it's just, you know, me moving to San Diego so soon, it was going to be too much for me to go for two weeks. But she's there now, like just awesome. living it up with all her family and, the, you know, the reunion and everything. But yeah, like I, uh, I've i taken my daughter twice. No, 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 once actually once to Mexico, but she was nine. And, you know, what was her favorite part is we went to Tepotzlan, which is a small town south of Mexico City. My mom was living there for a while. And she loved going to the market every morning and she fell in love with the the cheese, the Oaxacan cheese. You know, that's oh, my favorite. Oaxaca. Yes. Oh, el queso de Oaxaca. So good. And then she would have fresh squeezed apple juice. Oh. And to this day, she's like, mom, that cheese. <laughs> I was like, we can still get it here, but it's not the same. Yeah. They really sell like Oaxaca. original one. Yeah, but it's definitely tastes differently. But she like that to her was just like walking through the market and just seeing all the fresh food and just, you know, pigs hanging and chicken feet. And I mean, you can get that, you know, you can probably find that here, but that experience to her, like she was just 
like, wow. <laughs> and I love that you gave that to her. Because yeah. yeah, even at nine, she got to see, you know, the poverty too. And another thing that totally shocked her was the fact that there were so many stray dogs. Mm-hmm. So many stray dogs and uh, fresh, or it's one thing I miss. Yeah. I mean, just the fresh juices in general. Yeah. But she was just like mortified, mom, there's so many stray dogs. And I go, yeah, that's kind of what happens here. We don't have, they don't have, you know, shelters and kennels like they do in the States. The dogs kind of just live their hashtag best life in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I think that's one thing that people, um, you know, a lot of people think like Mexico in general, there's, yes, there's a lot of poverty, but there's also a lot of wealth there and there's a lot of richness and culture. And just, there's, I think we can all agree, no matter what, when you go down there, everybody says the same thing, just the hospitality and the warmth and just how gracious and welcoming, you know, the Mexicans are, and it doesn't matter who you are. Like they just will embrace you and they will do anything they possibly can to make your stay and just your visit as wonderful. It is the most, I mean, I can't even, it's like forming yeah. people. Um, so, you know, I have to say my expectations of, um, hospitality. Yeah. The United States has completely and forever changed. Um, Greece was beautiful absolutely stunning it's like a complete paradise yeah. but the people there are so rude oh, it, no. is crazy. <laughs> it is i was like in a complete shock you really? go to the restaurants okay and or you're asking for directions you are asking for help you know you go into the restaurants you expect people to you know you go here even in the I'm state free too, right hi and, yeah. Like to go in there, pásale, güerita, pásale, muchacha, que yeah, va a sus órdenes, señora, lo que usted fuera. That's the best. Like you, they just want to hug you, adopt you. Yeah. They don't know how to feed you. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah. Greece, it was a, such a beautiful country, but they are just so rude up there. Um, you know, it's like if you, if you, my son, um, you know, he went with the best attitude. He's like, mom, I'm going to try the food. He's such a picky eater eater here. And he yeah. was like, I'm going to try the food. And he would ask the waiters, he was like, what do you recommend? And they would literally be like, like, what do you mean? What are you asking me? Like, what's good? And we're like, oh my <laughs> God, like, we're just asking for advice. Like, yeah. well, what should we yeah. have? It was just like, if you ask for directions, if you ask for help, you know, um, it, yeah. Yeah, no, no hay ningún country que se compare como México and 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 just la, la calidad of the of the people. Um mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it, it it's very shocking, but it's so cool to to be able to see and experience, you yeah. know, the culture traditions of, of other countries. Um but yeah, you definitely hit it on the nail, Raquel, because there is yeah. nothing like it's Mexican. Nothing like it. Like I and even when they are here in the States, they bring it over here as well. Like that's, what's so fantastic. Like just even when I walk into a place and I start speaking Spanish, it's like, it, I mean, <laughs> already. The language, yes. You can express yeah. so much better. Yeah, they're already fantastic. But as soon as I open my mouth and I speak the language, they like go, they they're beside themselves. Cause First of all, I don't look Latina. I mean, I've got the light eyes and the nose, which there are a lot of like, I'm yes, like, there are. blonde and blue eye, by the way, yes. people, you know, but still it's that kind of, you know, you just assume that I wouldn't speak Spanish. And so when I do, they get so excited that like they even, you know, I get even like free, more free stuff or like, yes. like more like, like samples. <laughs> Get the ladies some samples. Yeah, like, it's funny how many, even when I was at UCLA in college, like, everybody would make fun of me. They're like, why do you get everything for free? I'm like, because I am a college student that's in here not embarrassed to speak Spanish and to talk to and be, and be respectful and treat everyone equally and with respect. Like, there's something to be said about that. And so in return, like, they always just were so gracious in giving me everything for free. And everybody just, like, couldn't get it. I'm like, yeah, it's called when you're really nice and <laughs> you treat others <laughs> like yeah. nicely too that's what happens as well but yeah I just think the culture like I yeah that's so so blessed it's just, like in our veins it's yeah in our veins you know to be warm and and calidos to everybody yeah. um and and it doesn't matter if they've moved to other countries but it's 
um, that the, that uh, sentimiento is always there. Yeah. Like we just, you know, we work with heart, we work with passion um, and they're just like entrepreneurs or go-getters. Like um, we were amazed because when we went to Santorini, like the, the cliff there, it's like, it, it was all just a bunch of hotels. And my sister and I kept saying like, oh my God, like if this was Mexico, like they'd be selling, you know, las piñas locas, they'd be selling la fruta, they'd be selling um, everything. And um, I don't know, I don't know how people like um, live out there because there's like, there's no vendimia. There is like, you know, like, yeah, you have like a lot of, um, I would say Mykonos has this really cute town um, uh, that has all kinds of little stores and boutiques. It's yeah. just beautiful. Um, but in Santorini, uh, it's like, where are the stores? Where's like the people selling stuff? There, You didn't see none of that. And um, I, I, it just made us um, appreciate even more our culture. Yeah. Um, no, I love that. And that's like a perfect ending to the show. Just us like really appreciating our different cultures and the culture that we came from and just really celebrating that. And so that's why like with Hispanic Heritage Month, that's what's like, I'm going to have Lauren here. We're going to celebrate. And we're going to talk about like, you know, <laughs> how amazing the Mexican culture is. It really is. And just we're proud Latinas. <laughs> we're proud Latinas. And I, and I, I have to say, you know, um, Raquel, I really admire how you um, you you push and you um, leverage other Latinas. Um, so I'm very grateful um, for the opportunity to, to, to be here today with you um, because we need, we need that, you know, our Latinas need to see it. Um, I had a conversation with, uh, with uh, somebody in our school district here in the area. And, um, you know, they, their, the conversation was like, oh, well, anybody should be able to aspire um, being a teacher. And I said, you know, for minorities, if you don't see it, you don't aspire it. I didn't end up in banking because I saw other Latinas. I, I ended up, you know, just because I looked it up in the newspaper. But now I see so many of the children that um, uh, of my clients um, that have ended up in banking. And yeah. it's the greatest reward um, because I know that for them to have seen that one Latina working at that, you know, that credit union, um, it, it became a door, it became a window to say, oh, there are other jobs, there are other opportunities. We don't always have to work at a restaurant or, you know, uh, hotels or cleaning this and that. No, there are other um, great careers um, that, you know, don't require a college degree and you can become very successful. Um, but our community needs that. They need to be able to see um, other successful Latinas so that they can envision themselves in it. Yeah, well, you're definitely one of them. <laughs> so I can I can understand why so, so many young ladies would aspire to be like you. So thank you. I, I mean, yay. Am I going to see you at NARB? Just really quick. Are you coming yes. to NARB? Okay, oh, yes. so I'll be able to get you yes, we will be there. next week. Even yes. better. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again. And I know we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but it's all good. And people always come back to the replay. So I don't worry about anything. Yeah. <laughs> no stress. Um, so thanks again, everybody. And thank you, Laura. And I will get to hug you next week. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> thanks, everyone.